So this first video segment will cover warm-up and stretching and flexibility specific to skiing. You should always begin every exercise session with an appropriate warm-up. The stretching and flexibility you can do both before and after every exercise session. So the warm-up might only take you a few minutes, but it's very important you do it. You've got to get your body temperatures up. So we can start with the most basic of things. 30 seconds to a minute of some jumping jacks. If you have a stationary bike at home, five minutes on the bike or on a treadmill, walking is good as well. If you just have a, you know, an open space area though, jumping jacks, some ankle bounds, just getting your body moving. Okay, and then we want to start moving left to right a little bit, get the knee joints. Again, I talked about lubrication of the, the, the joints. As you move, it's kind of like oiling the joints. It gets things moving. Some left to right. Your hip joints are very important for skiing, so we're going to do some swings. This also starts to warm up my balance, which you're going to need in your workouts. Five to ten reps each leg, swinging the left forward backwards, and then in and out. This is very harder than it looks. There's a lot of balance involved, and if you need to hold on to something while you do this, this is fine as well. Your ankle joints need to get warmed up, so you want to push your knees directly over your feet. Now, of course, if you have any type of pain when you're doing these type of things, you stop. This should be pain-free. And then some squat-like motions, pushing your hips back. Just again, getting the, the thighs warmed up. And maybe a little bit for the upper body, some arm circles. Circles forward, backwards. Swing the arms left and right. Very simple things to do. Then you're ready to go into your exercise session. Okay, we're all familiar with flexibility, the ability of your muscles to elongate and lengthen. Skiing has some specific demands. Certain muscle groups really have to be elongated, particularly the ankles and the hips, which I'm going to demonstrate. So let's think about skiing. When you're skiing, you have to be able to push your knees forward. Basically, you're pushing into the front of the boot. That requires a lot of flexibility and the back of the calf area, and a lot of ankle mobility. If you're limited in your ability to move your knee forward, you're going to fall on your back seat. So some exercises to work on that are pushing the knee forward into the ankle. And you can use a wall. And just from this position, push your knee directly over the front of your ankle. This is a good way to end the session when you're working on some ankle mobility, holding the stretch for a few seconds, and then backing off. And of course, you want to do both sides. The other area of your body that requires a lot of flexibility and mobility is your hips. Skiing is all hip rotation, hip flexion, and sometimes even when you fall backwards, hip extension. So some of the most basic exercises are the half kneel stretch to stretch the front of your hip and quad, holding again for approximately 30 seconds, or you can do it in intervals, backing up and forth for 5 to 10 second holds. And of course you want to do the other leg. Your hamstrings, these tight hamstrings can pull on your back, cause back pain. So just a basic stretch, holding again for approximately 30 seconds. Hands behind the knees, and just when you feel a light stretch in the hamstrings, just hold it. And as you continue the stretch, you can pull a little bit more aggressively. And probably as important as anything is hip rotation. The ability to rotate the hip in or out. We can use this stretch here, just putting a little bit of rotation torque on the hip. It can also be done on your back. We've seen this done. If you ever been to a yoga class with Pilates, where you pull the knee into your chest with a little bit of torque from the bottom part of your foot here, and just force that rotation in the hip. You'll feel in the back of your hip joint. Very good. Okay, so flexibility takes time. Don't expect changes overnight. You remember, it took you decades to get where you are. You're not going to come out of these tight muscle groups in a matter of days. But if you can work on this daily into the ski season, even in the summer months as well, you will see changes. And of course, the goal again is to increase the longevity of your ski career. Having flexible muscles will do that for you. The beauty of this program is the flexibility part never changes. The same flexibility program you do in phase one, you do in phase two and three. 
And the same with the warm-up. The warm-up is always going to be the same. So it's pretty simple in that sense. So hopefully you have a better understanding of the importance of warm-up and stretching and flexibility as it applies to skiing. In the next video segment, we'll cover phase one, the foundation exercises for skiing.